Well, good day and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to show you around an area called Pine Garner. And Pine Garner is in the hills in behind St Helens. It's only about 40 odd kilometres from St Helens up in the northeast coast of Tassie. But it's uh, a place that we were given a tip off from a lady in one of the shops at St Helens and she said it was worth a visit. So we thought we'd go up and have a look and we are so glad we did. It was stunning up there. We ended up spending five days. We had some freezing nights <laughs> while we were there. Uh, we had one morning at minus five and a couple of mornings at minus three, but freezing cold mornings mean beautiful days. And once the sun got up and warmed up the ground, it was sensational. We did a lot of touring around while we were up there, drove many kilometers up through the forests and up through the hills and just loved every minute of it. It was just stunning. So we'll take you for a trip around the Pine Garner region and just show you what's available up there. As I said, we loved it. Certainly our most favorite camp for the entire trip without a doubt. So here we go, Pine Garner, have a look. Pine Garner, which is a um, recreational reserve um, inland from St. Helens. Only, what was it, about 30 odd clay or something? Yeah, not far at all. We're just trying to get the fire going because she's pretty chilly. But um, this is just the most beautiful place. So looking out over the footy field, they had their one and only footy game for the year last weekend. So we missed it, unfortunately. <laughs> one game a year. Looks like the fire's going. Oh dear. We're in, staying in Pine Garner, little tiny little country place at the Rec Reserve. And uh, we've just come up to St. Columbus Falls, which is only a very short walk in. So see what it's what we're amazed is we are absolutely in the middle of nowhere and yet there's three cars here. <laughs> anyway, let's see, we'll read the rules. Have a Just look at some of these things. Set it before. These, these things grow about a centimetre a year and some of these are well over five metres tall. Quite incredible. So 500 year old he ferns. Wow, look at the size of this one. It's so impressive. It's just beautiful. It's so pretty. Pretty, pretty, and. No platypus. So there it is, St. Columbus Falls. It's quite impressive, really. Over 90 metres high. Largest or highest in Tassie. There's another one. Highest drop, I think. Highest drop? The Montezuma Falls said the highest as well, didn't it? Everyone wants to be the highest. Freezing cold. Beautiful. It's very beautiful, but it's very, 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 very cold. There's it's another one called Russell Falls. Ralph. Ralph Falls. We're going to go and have a look at Ralph Falls as well. How yep. good is that sunshine? Thawing out. <laughs> It's amazing down in the shadows in the valley. It's got to be six or seven degrees maximum down there. It's really chilly. So we're doing the Ralph Falls circuit walk, actually. So um, it goes around, there's Ralph Falls, and then there's a gorge that you go through as well. Cash's Gorge. Cash's Gorge. So it's about an hour to do that one. So we're going to do that. So we're once again, we're quite surprised. We're in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It was quite a rugged um, bush track, or well, not forestry road to get here, quite stony. And uh, when we got here, there's another car here. So it's not as remote as we uh, thought it might be. Okay, we'll uh, kick this one. This is really pretty coming through here with the sunlight streaming through the trees. There's big frogs. Have a look at this. How gorgeous is it? And these are sassafras by the looks of it. They are sassafras trees. I'm getting to know our Tassie trees quite well. You can tell they're sassafras trees. I'll show you how you can tell. If you have a look at the leaves, see the serrated edges on the leaves? That's how you can tell they're sassafras. Let's have a look at the moss growing on this tree here. Good indication they might get a bit of rain in this spot. Do, do. Oh, it's almost in the sunshine as well. Oh, wow. Wow. It's unexpected. Holy oh, moly. How pretty is that? 
really pretty. How's the I'm sunshine? Just thaw out for a <laughs> She's a chilly one. Chilly, chilly. We're in fungi heaven here at the moment. There's uh, fungi everywhere. It's just beautiful. God, have a look at this. I'll show you this first. Have a look at this. That's amazing. So we're at Cash's Gorge. Beautiful looking out. This has been a really good walk. Yeah, it's just been stunning. Little bits of sunshine everywhere and we just need it. Yeah, and you certainly do just need it, that's for sure. Oh wow, have a look at this gorge. So this is a, um, a tin mining area through here. There's lots of old tin mines all um, abandoned nowadays. But it is just makes you appreciate how tough those guys were that came in and opened up this country and mined tin or cut timber or whatever they did. It's just such tough country. Well, we're doing our best to enjoy the great outdoors. It's um, beautiful by the fire, but the temperature is four degrees at the moment. And you've got to be sitting on the fire. And it's only, what time is it? It's, 5.30, yeah, so it's 5.30. We can't cook dinner yet, otherwise we'd be in bed by 6. <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing how much has changed. I mean, admittedly, there was daylight saving when we first arrived here, but it wasn't getting dark until quarter past 8, something like oh, that. No. After... Almost 9 o'clock. Yeah, so now we're at 5.30, certainly by quarter to 6, 6 o'clock, it'll be pitch black. It's just incredible how quickly the um, daylight changes when you're this far south. Anyway, we've got a great little fire going and we've got a couple of glasses of wine to keep us warm, but it won't be long, we'll be retreating back inside. Four degrees is just about pushing the limit for us, I think. <laughs> but still, this is... Yeah. They're laughing at these stupid white fellows that are sitting outside in the cold. <laughs> Beautiful sunset. Uh, it's um, just glorious. We got Venus is up there in the sky. We think it's Venus. We'll have to have a look on the phone. But the sun's going down, so the sun's gone down. Beautiful twilight. Should be a magnificent night of stars tonight. I might even sneak outside and try and get some photos. I can just see the pointers of the Southern Cross up there as well. Good on you. <laughs> I'll get my camera assistant to come out and give me a hand. Nah, she won't be. <laughs> Alrighty, where's my wine? Oh, here it is. I'll tell you how cold it is. It's almost too cold to hold the cups. They're, they're freezing, freezing cold. But oh, how good is a fire? You cannot beat a campfire. Campfire and a glass of wine. Perfect combination. So it was a very chilly morning this morning, um, minus four, and uh, you're not going to be able to see it really, but there was frost over everything. So I stuck the drone up, got some footage actually um, of it this morning because it was just so pretty, so pretty, and so freezing cold. <laughs> it was absolutely gorgeous. But today is going to be another cracker day by the looks of it. So um, we've got another couple of walks to do this morning. And then we're going to stay here tonight again because it's just such a lovely place. We had two neighbours last night and that was it. it. It's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. But boy oh boy, I tell you what, we were keen to get that diesel heater on at about 5.30 this morning because it was cold inside the van. 
It was freezing, but uh, thank goodness for the diesel heater. I'll take you over here to see if we can get a footy, some footage of this, of the frost on the footy ground. So you see the footy ground is still in shade and still very, very frosty. Gorgeous, isn't it? You see, we don't get a lot of frost in Perth. Okay, I'll go and uh, have some brekkie. Another nice cuppa. But this is just a beautiful spot, Pine Garner. You know, at the recreations, uh, recreational ground, um, there's um, hot showers, $2 for three minutes. So take $4 with you. Um, toilets, no power, no water though. But, oh, the serenity. It is beautiful. So only oh, 60 seconds from the camping area is the Pine Garner Dairy and Cheese Factory. So they make their own cheeses here. And we just had a bit of a sampling, some really nice cheeses. And here's a tip. Ask them if they've got any half price off cuts because uh, what they can't package up neatly, they'll put in bags and sell at half price. So um, that's really good. And they've got ice cream and they make a great coffee. And also, really interesting, is the um, cow milking machine. It's all automated. So the cows just walk in and there's a laser that works out where the udders are, plugs them in, and uh, they're milked automatically, which is pretty cool. And I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it, but I'll go down here and just show it to you. Oh, this is the grounds, by the way. How cool is this? Children's playground here as well. Go down, have a look at the cow milk. Unfortunately, sun's shining the wrong way, you're not going to see very much at all. But um, what happens is the cows just wander up when they feel like it, and they, uh, they get a bit of a feed. So they walk into a stall, they get a bit of a feed, and then the machine plugs itself in. There's a couple of cows coming up now. Machine plugs itself in and um, milks them, and when it's all done, they wander away again. Apparently they'll uh, come up two or three times a day. Coming up here now. Just grab my coffee. Morning, girls. Morning, 906. Morning, 107. Oh, there we go. And the rest you're not going to be able to see. But that's it. Now they're, uh, they'll just find an empty stall walk into the store, have a feed, and uh, get milked. Okay. Pretty cool. We better get going. This is so nice, no one will leave. You've got some hiking to do. It is gorgeous, isn't it? So Maybe we're head, headed up into the hills, headed up into the hills again, and uh, we're going to Blue something. What's Blue it called? Tier. Blue Tier Ridge. Big Tree Walk. Big Tree Walk. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. So it's up a bit of a... It's a ah. balmy 6 degrees at 11 o'clock. But um, it's lovely driving up. It'll be interesting to see what this walk's like. So this one comes pretty highly rated, this um, blue tier big tree walk. So we're looking forward to doing that. Hopefully it won't be as chilly as it was yesterday afternoon. But it looks like we're getting into the tall timber country now. How are these ferns? Oh, they're these? just stunning. Certainly getting up towards the top of the hill. It's been a constant sort of climb since we started on this road. But it's a good road, it's only a few potholes every now and then, a little bit of corrugation. It's not a bad road at all. So our nice and easy gentle road up through the bush has turned into a bit of a uh, an adventure really because they're, they're relaying the uh, surface of this road. So they've just dumped a heap of muddy gravel on it. And, uh, we've just passed the grader and a couple of big trucks. But um, you can probably see the conditions of this road. I'll try and get some from outside. Are pretty ordinary. Yeah. She was mud on mud oh. on mud. Far Beautiful. out. <laughs> there we go. Already, we're Back on, on the, the trail. trail. So this is where we are. Blue Tier Big Tree Giant Walk. 
which is just in there, three and a bit kilometres, three and a half kilometres or something like that. It's tree hugging time. Oh, it's so gnarly. Look at it. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So this is the swamp gum. Wow, look at that. It's got to be... Just looking at that. So it's two, four, five, five metres in diameter. How cool. And this one's not the biggest one. There's bigger ones yet, apparently. Well, there we go. This is a, uh, a big old fella. You can see, you see so many of these massive trees that have come tumbling down and you can see why, like the, the whole centre of this tree has just been rotted away. <laughs> Holy cow, <laughs> the size of it. I'm trying to get down here. They are massive, aren't they? Largest flowering plant on the planet, apparently. What? These swamp gums. Oh. Hmm. There we go. It's like a scene from the Game of Thrones, this one. <laughs> oh, just amazing. Gotta get up, though. The fungi dragon here as well. Does it say do not sit on the tree? This is the tree that hugs you. Here we are, the blue tear giant. Have a look at the size of this thing. It is huge. 60 meters tall. It's the largest tree by girth in Australia, apparently. Even bigger than the tingle tree. Ooh. And you can sit back here and watch it grow. If they serve coffee to the table. We've come to a place called Paris Dam, Mount Paris, and um, thought we'd, we thought we'd come down and we'd have a little bit of a um, picnic down here and enjoy the peace and tranquility of the dam. But um, there's two things going against us. One is there's a friggin' big digger working right there in the car park and the other one is the dam is very unimpressive yeah there's a more scenic part yeah. all right well let's do that then okay well we might have underestimated the size of the dam <laughs> that's it that's it behind us there so we're on the downhill side of the dam I wonder if you can get up and do the walk along the top of it or something. There's a waterfall thing up here. Oh, okay. Let's go Not and have bad. a look at the waterfall thing. <laughs> there's the waterfall thing. Oh, look, there's a beautiful lake. Um, it looks like that this um, stretch here is used by mountain bikes by the looks of it. Although that's a serious bit of diggings going on there. Cool. Let's have a look. Eek. Oh, look at that. Pass left travel. <laughs> so these must have been sluice gates or something. Don't know. It's really interesting. Wow, okay. That's quite impressive. So a really interesting story about the dam, that the, um, the dam was built to support a uh, tin mine that was here many years ago, but uh, when the tin mine shut down, it was given back to the state government, and then they decided that it wasn't strong enough to hold back serious floodwaters, so they ended up cutting those three slots, the one that we walked through and a couple of others, so that the water could just run through the dam, it would no longer hold back the water. But uh, interestingly enough, the uh, supervisor of the construction was a guy called John Proud, I think. And he was the man that established Proud's The Jewelers. And he was also in the aeroplane that crashed into the Lamington National Park that was rescued by O'Reilly. Or two of the people that were in it were rescued by, by O'Reilly. And uh, this John Proud was one of those two people. 
and O'Reilly's Resort up there in the Lamington National Park <coughs> is certainly one of our favourite places. Beautiful spot. So there you go. Interesting history about the dam. So we're um, at a little place called Little Blue Lake. And it's very blue. It's really blue. And it's blue because it's got a very high aluminium content. Strangely enough. But what we're going to do, we're going to do a walk up to um, a spot called Cube Rock. Which is, well the cube is it? Yeah. Which is um, right up here on this mountain. Down a 5k walk did they say? Yep. 5k walk up. Okay, we just need to work out how to get there well, now. Well the trail is a little bit indistinct and a little bit rudimentary at places. This is a creek crossing. Lisa's experience with creek crossings is not sensational. No. Oh. Just walk across, Lisa. It's sturdy as. Yeah. Just pick the big bits to stand on and keep walking. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. There we go, that was easy. Easy peasy. Hopefully oh. this is the right track. We're about um, one and a half K up. It's about a two and a half K climb, so just over halfway. But have a look at these beds of moss. How cool are they? We're mm -hmm. uh, not that much further up than we were last time. But um, I just stopped to uh, de-layer. And we mentioned it before, when you're in Tassie, you've got to take layers that you can strip off and put back on again as the conditions change. Because they change so often. If you're in the shade, it's really cold. And as soon as you get in the sun, it's beautiful and warm. But so. also, if you're walking, you know, 5K straight uphill, it gets a bit hot. It does. You need to uh, de-layer for that. But anyway, we've got to keep pushing on. It's not getting any easier, even though we've done a lot of climbing. <laughs> In the couple of months or three months we've been here, it doesn't seem to get any easier. But again, if we hadn't been, uh, hadn't done any training, maybe it would have been really hard. But it's so worthwhile. It is great. Rightio, there it is. Push. Just up there, there's a very steep valley between us and the rock. So I'm not sure how far we can go. Anyway, we'll keep pushing on the track. Who is this? Very cool. Amazing. When you go down to get the lunchbox, can you bring my drone up as well? Rightio, the big square rock is just over there. Not far now. Not far now. Lisa's pushed on ahead while I did some admin. Well, there it is. How cool is this? How did this rock end up up here like this? <laughs> It is just amazing. What a fantastic walk. We normally wait and do um, the wrap up when we get back to the car, but the battery's running low. So I'm going to wrap it up now. What a fantastic walk. The cube, is that what it's called? Cube rock? Great walk. Cube rock. It's uh, technically quite easy, but physically a little bit demanding because you're going up quite a lot of hills. But 10 out of 10. What a stunner. It is a great walk. Just have a look at the size of this thing. See if you can move at least. It, you know, when you look at the, the markings in it, it almost looks like it's been drilled out of somewhere, doesn't it? It's quite incredible. Shady side. Mmm. Okay. Don't venture too close to that cliff because it's a long way down. Been to a few places where you feel like you're on top of the world, but this has got to be one of them. How good is this place? Look at this. So Lisa informs me the um, the rock is between Pioneer and Gladstone, um, right next to the Little Blue Lake. So you might be able to find the Little Blue Lake a little bit easier. 
and the uh, the hike starts from right beside the little blue lake but it's a cracker if you're a walker make sure you do this one she's a beauty so we're at the anchor stamp place <laughs> the anchor stamp battery so these are old um two old batteries here that they used to crush the ore so that they could extract the tin out of it there you go they're pretty cute aren't they <laughs> thompson and co makers castle name unreal and this one's a different one cool now this one was made in launceston 1882 oh, unreal can you imagine just transporting these things in here yeah. in 1882 yeah. and they wouldn't have had those steps <laughs> so in this area the um it was one of the richest tin mining areas at the northeast corner of tassie and uh, as most places where mining was booming there was a large number of chinese immigrants that came in to um try and make their fortune in um in the mining game and there's a trail that runs from Launceston all the way down to St Helens that um, commemorates the Chinese involvement in the mining industry and um, this is a little place called the Trail of the Dragons I think that trail actually so this is a cemetery what's the name of the town Marina Marina M -R -I -N -A. Marina there we go um, the only Chinese monument, there's a Chinese monument, a memorial, there's no Chinese graves. Oh really? Because? Because their bodies were exhumed and sent back to China. That's it. Because Chinese tradition is to bury their dead twice. So they bury them once and then after a period of time when the flesh has decayed away from the bones, they dig them up and rebury them. Sometimes in, in the name. sometimes in the same spot and sometimes in a new grave. And there was a monument build, built up there because apparently when they have a funeral they have little pieces of paper that they write their blessings on and they were worried that when they had a funeral for them that the, um, with there was so much forest around that things would catch on fire so this monument was built like an oven shaped thing for them to put something. There we go. Okay. It's very Something. interesting. Yeah. We'll, go for, <laughs> we'll go for a little walk and have a look. So there it is, there's the oven that was used to burn the little pieces of paper that held messages for those that were being buried. Oh. Really interesting. So there you go. How cool is that place? It's a stunner. It's an absolutely must do if you're touring around Tassie. Go up and have a look at Pine Ghana. So that's pretty well it. We're uh, getting very close now to leaving Tassie. We've only got about a week to go before we jump on the ferry and head back to the mainland. And I tell you what, we are pretty sad that we're doing that because we have absolutely had a blast. And what we think we might do, we might just do a little bit of a wrap up video um, once we get settled somewhere and we've got some time. And we'll uh, show you what our favorites were and uh, any must do's or must not do's. And there's not many must not do's in Tassie, that's for sure. So we'll do that. We'll do a bit of a wrap up vid and uh, give you our top 10 things to do in Tassie. So thanks for joining us once again. And uh, Next time we're talking to you, we'll be on the man there. So, catch you later. So